Hello guitar fans out there, this is Howard Lease. 22 years in the band hard and now I'm in a band called Bad Company from London, England. And uh, this is my old 60 Burst. I called it the Grail. I got this guitar in 1979 in Tulsa, Oklahoma from Larry Briggs. And uh, that day I bought a 57 Strat, which Nancy Wilson took. But I had this guitar for 25 years or so. What up you guitar maniacs, it's Phil X and we're talking about a 1960s burst here and first off what? first off I've never seen this before, I've never seen it's got the all-seeing eye on it Ooh. usually uh, bursts on a Les Paul are very symmetrical they cut two pieces of maple and they match them up and they put them on the top but this, look at that, that's completely I don't know if you can catch that. They call it the eye around here. The all-seeing eye. And uh, I've never seen anything like it. It's cool. Lots of character. This guitar rocks. I'm uh, plugged into a Tone Master from 1960s era. And I use pedals sometimes. This is just this guitar. This guitar and that amp. And it's totally... Rock and roll, right? This is a great sounding burst. Stock and original. And it sounds like this. Actually, we always do this, right? And this is guys in their bands, right? I don't know how many drummers watch these videos, but uh, Rock and Roll by Zeppelin, for instance. You wouldn't believe how many drummers play the intro wrong. If you're in a band and you talk to your drummer and you go, hey man, what, what beat do you start the intro to Rock and Roll on? And if he says one, punch him in the eye. Because it starts on the three end. It's like, it's actually the, if you think about the Chuck Berry, uh, Johnny B. Good riff. That's what the drums are doing. So it's one, two, three, da da and da 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 and da. So if your drummer doesn't play like that, wrestle him to the floor, punch him in the face, get it right, dude. All right. And on the guitar scope of things here, I didn't realize this. I've been listening to the song for so many years, and I didn't realize that this happened at the end, the last round before the lonely, lonely before the drum solo, that whole thing. It's doing the basic. <laughs> And then when it goes to the D, it does this. I'll do the, the, the round for the, so you know where I'm at. Check it out. You know what I'm talking about, right? Has anybody ever heard that one before? I didn't hear it until like, I don't know, a couple of months ago. And it's just, that's the thing about Jimmy Page. There's so many hidden things in his guitar playing and production and stuff like that, that you just miss it. So uh, I'm catching my breath and we're moving on. Anyway, this guitar is on uh, lots of heart records. Over the years, I played it in the studio all the time. I used it live with the Paul Rogers band many, many times. And uh, y you can go. Sweet or sassy, depending on your style. It's only a guitar this old will sound where the wood's nice and dry. They took their time when they made these guitars back in the 60s, in the 50s, I mean. And I don't think there's anything like it that you can buy today. The 
Grail, now affectionately referred to as Lisa, L-E-E-S-A. Um, this guitar is awesome. The neck pickup sounds like velvet. Right? In the meantime, uh, show you the, oh, 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 see, there it happened again. <laughs> I was going to go to the clean town, but I'm not going to because I'm not inspired to. I have to be honest with you. I know someone's going to say, man, he didn't even go to the clean town, but it's too bad. But um, there's a couple of things I want to play on a Les Paul because it's just this guitar really smokes. Um, one is the Tush uh, ZZ Top. Tush. Isn't that funny? The song's called Tush. It's about ass, right? Like uh, a band put a, band, a song called Tush today. It'd be kind of like, what? But... They did it with style and grace and like this. Yeah! I'm getting that. Joe Perry uses a Les Paul. And I, I, I jam around a lot with, uh, with uh, Walk This Way. I do it all the time. But I want to explore the solos today. Um, so it's uh, the first solo. Is, uh, Walk this way. Talk this way. Just gonna kiss. Crazy solo, right? The second solo is even crazier. There's like this delta triplet uh, uh, pull off thing that happens. So check it out. Um, if I can get it right. Walk this way. Walk this way. Just gonna kiss. Wait, missed it. Walk this way. Walk this way. Just give me a. I don't want to keep doing that, it's bad for the knob. But, did you check that out? I'll do that slow. Killer lick. I, I, I can't go to sleep at night sometimes because I think about that lick, it's sexy. So, um, and then it does the whole... because I was trying to remember it. But anyways, cool licks, Joe Perry. I, I'm trying to, if someone can tell me if it was uh, Joe Perry or Brad Whitford that did those in-between solos, that would be awesome. Howard, do you know? A lot of people play this riff, and most of the people that play it, play it wrong. I'm going to show you how to play it properly. Because <laughs> I play it for a living. First thing, you've got to have the big A, big boy A, with your fingers up here on the A. Then the second part is with an open G string. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Cost off right, you need that that uh, trembling vibrato. <laughs> Strings are are heavy. Howard doesn't know. Howard's here. I met Howard today first time. I'm very excited. I'm a fan. Um, uh, Howard's old guitar. Cool, right? Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's it, man. Howard played some. I played some. We had a great time today. Thank you very much. Kick ass.